Tammy, if you could say a word for me just to make sure I can hear you. A word for me. That's good. And it's Tammy Belinsky, correct? Yeah. T-A-M-M-Y-B-E-L-I-N-S-K-Y. Yes. And how should I uh, refer to you? In this? You usually refer to me. Paradigm Pipeline opponent. Yeah, but, but but that's fine. That a, a committed opponent is yes. the latest word, right? They called Tina Badger a committed opponent in the, in the filing yesterday. Did they go? Okay. <laughs> So, um, so what I'm hearing from you is that, uh, first off, we have this uh, deadline that's coming up on public comment as it relates to the consent decree. So is that a part of why, or a, ma a major reason why you're here today in terms of uh, trying to marshal folks to share their opinion about how this is all playing out? Yes, the state has a, apparently has an obligation to, co to collect public comments on the proposed agreement with the Mountain Valley Pipeline on how to resolve the past compliance issues and violations of the 401 certification. So the Attorney General is collecting public comment on the uh, sufficiency consent. of that consent decree and the requirements imposed on Mountain Valley Pipeline under that order. And it's your uh, position that this consent decree has uh, minimized the amount of damage that you say continues to this day? Is that, is that a fair statement? Uh, the consent decree is, a, is essentially a forward-looking document. It is prospective. It, it, it requires Mountain Valley Pipeline to do certain things in the future to monitor their sediment erosion control problems. It does not require Mountain Valley Pipeline to evaluate the harm done in the streams already. It doesn't require them to do any biological analyses of the streams where the streams are filled with sediment. It doesn't require Mountain Valley Pipeline to remove the sediment from the streams. And it doesn't require Mountain Valley Pipeline to do any stream bank restorations where our stream banks have been destroyed. It, it, it is merely forward looking. And then it has a, 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 a small monetary fine attached to it for them failing to, to control sediment and erosion in the past. So what in your opinion is the result? The result of the consent order, the right. consent decree? Uh, the consent decree that you obviously feel is inadequate. Well, it, uh, I've heard others talk about it. The, the folks who've been doing the monitoring believe that the, the structure in the consent order for how monitoring will be done in the future will actually make it more challenging for citizen monitors to also participate in the monitoring process. There are uh, more barriers and more hoops and uh, will make it more challenging for us to bring documentation of violations forward. And it's your position that these damages continue, that this, that the work that has been done by uh, MVP has not stopped uh, essentially violations of these requirements? The, the harm to our streams will continue, primarily because the the approval agencies have been negligent in approving stormwater analyses that do not take into account that the way that they've changed the landscape, taking the trees off the landscape, flattening the ground, compacting the ground, lay people know that that increases the stormwater runoff. And so their sediment and erosion control measures are always going to be inadequate because they're increasing the rate of flow to such an intense degree that the only thing that could capture that runoff would be large lakes constructed at the bottom of every hill. And that they have not wanted to, Mountain Valley Pipeline never wanted to invest in that kind of stormwater in sediment erosion control. They would have to acquire more land to do that. 
you were saying there's a, a victim at the bottom of every slope. What did you mean by that? There's a victim at the bottom of every slope. And the victim is the, the stream that we know, everybody knows who lives in the Roanoke Valley, who lives in the Roanoke area, knows that at the bottom of every hill in, in this mountain valley terrain is a stream. And the aquatic creatures that live in those streams and the other wildlife that depends on those habitats and our water quality, our drinking water quality downstream, our fishing holes, there, there's a victim at the bottom of every single one of these slopes. And so what's the bottom line message that you're sharing as it relates to these concerns that you uh, raised today? The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has been incredibly negligent. The pipeline is missing permits that are components of the FERC certification. At this stage, Mountain Valley Pipeline shouldn't even have a certificate from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. They should be out of business. This pipeline construction has proved that these, this kind of a project cannot be built without causing both acute and chronic long-term harm to our water resources. We told them what would happen. We told them more than once what, we ha what would happen. We've been showing them pictures for a year and a half of what is happening. And yet the DEQ is allowing them to continue using the same construction plans they've had from the very beginning. It's grossly negligent. And I've also heard you say that they've uh, been doing work that, that should be considered beyond the scope of stabilization. Uh, where they've continued to, you feel like they've continued to do work that goes beyond what they're authorized to do in terms of stabilization. These voluntary stop work incidents are uh, a sham because they actually continue to work under the guise of stabilization. The public is led to believe what they mean is they're stabilizing the soil and they're stabilizing the slopes. But what it means in the industry, in the pipeline industry, to stabilize means to stabilize the pipe. That's all they're ever interested in. If you read their literature, if you read the, read the pipeline industry literature, the word stabilization refers to the pipe, not to the environment. And so there's obfuscation going on here between, between and among FERC and the pipeline industry when they lead the public to believe that, they're, that the only interest at this time is to stabilize the environment when that's not the case. After their so-called voluntary stop work went into place, they continued and they continue to this day under variances from the stop work to construct, to move the soil around if they're not putting in pipe, they're getting the ready, they're getting the soil ready to put the pipe in the ground in the next chance they get. Well, recognizing this is gonna be a brief story, what else would you like to add? Shit flows downhill. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Thank you very much.